Mr. Javedi, uh, thank you so much. Your words have been very inf insightful. I would now like to uh, invite Mr. Mahesh Parsuraman to address us an ever-burning question. Private equity, investing in enterprise or entrepreneur? Mr. Pahesh Parsuram, uh, Par, uh, Parsuraman, with an extensive experience of 20 plus years, has led successful investments and their eventual profitable exits for Carlyle. He co-founded Amicus Capital, a mid-market private equity fund, in 2015. Over to you, Mr. Parsuraman. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Danpal. That was a detailed uh, presentation. Um, over the next five to ten minutes, what I'm going to do is uh, take you through this topic as to what private equity is really looking for. Are they looking to invest in an enterprise or are they looking to back an entrepreneur? Uh, so uh, I think this view might change depending upon the type of investor, but uh, I think it, it would suffice to say that uh, a lot of what I'm trying to tell you would apply to uh, the private equity community as a whole, and you know, a lot of my co-panelists would sort of tend to agree with, with this approach. Uh, a private equity fund investment for it to be successful you know, there's an interplay of several factors that really come into play. You know, you have macro factors, you have competition, management team, founders, uh, uh, industry regulations that are changing. All of them need to actually confluence and come together for, for it to be a really successful investment. This is how, you know, a typical business plan looks at, uh, looks like, you know. So when you, when you underwrite an investment, this is what the founder thinks. Uh, you know, the top half of this is really representative of what the goal over a three, five year period looks like. You raise some capital, you know, and you know, you grow the business, you invest in technology, product, marketing, uh, but that's really not what the real re reality is. What you see in the second half of this is, is really what goes through in an in investment. You know, you have, uh, you know, a lot of obstacles coming your way. You know, the second, uh, in the second half of it shows that you have competition, there's regulation, there are a lot of things that, that really change. And in all of this, there are a number of factors that are both dynamic and complex and uncontrollable. And for an enterprise to navigate and for it to be successful, there are a bunch of things that need to do. As you can see in this, there are a number of interventions that need to take place. And this intervention it cannot be done in an enterprise. It involves some level of human intervention. You need to maybe pivot. You need to provide guidance, strategy, do a bunch of things. So what are these? Uh, and what are these complex and uncontrollable factors that, that come into play? The first one is business cycles are getting shorter. If you look back maybe over the last uh, two decades or so, every cycle was maybe six, eight, ten years but that cycle time is actually getting crunched. Now you're seeing business cycles that are three to five year cycles. You have uh, disruption all around. You have new business models that are emerging that, you know, where people are actually, new enterprises coming that are questioning the entire uh, thesis in, in a sector or a sub-segment. Uh, the environment is changing. The, there are a lot of regulations, so you need to be nimble-footed in addition to, you know, the, the, the fact that there's disruption all around. There's a human element in, in execution, and I, I think we'll come to this, uh, you know, this part of the story really, and this is where I think entrepreneurs play an important role, not only entrepreneurs, but also good management teams. And the last one, like Danpal mentioned, is that we're investing in an illiquid asset class. It's important for us to exit in a time-bound manner, maybe a cycle of between three to seven years, depending upon you know, whether your venture or your growth or your private equity, you know, across the asset class, you know, each investor might have different return expectations and timelines, but you need to exit within a defined time frame. So in all this journey of all the, uh, of these complex factors, uh, and some of which are uncontrollable, the, there are only two people that are, you know, constant. One, there's an entrepreneur there, the management teams might come and go, and there's an investor there that's looking to make some return, having given capital. And uh, the role of the entrepreneur here, I think, plays a very, very important role as a result. One, he needs to provide guidance, needs to make sure that, you know, he, he's a visionary, he is able to, you know, deliver the outcomes and manage all these obstacles. So, uh, you know, here I'm going to pause and probably tell you what we look at, uh, you know, in an enterprise. A lot of uh, the investing that we do, you know, people might think that it's a science but it's nearly, really not one. One part of the business is validated and analyzed very logically. You do your own diligence, market analysis, commercial due diligence, accounting, financial. But a large part of what private equity does is really to, to, to make sure that they back a right entrepreneur. 
And I think that's a very, very important aspect. It's the most softer aspect that doesn't come out in the open. Uh, you know, it, 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 is, it is more inter interactive and during uh, uh, multiple engagements that you really determine whether you want to partner with somebody, whether you want to back somebody. So I think that's a very important focus because uh, a part of our own analysis and, and the investment thesis. So what is it that we're looking for in, uh, you know, in an entrepreneur? And I think this is something that, you know, you might, you might want to understand. Apart from the fact that you have a good business, I think what is important for us is that we back a great entrepreneur because the outcomes of all these businesses and investments that we make, uh, it, it, the success of this is driven by, you know, backing a good entrepreneur and a strong management team. We want to back somebody who's driven, who's passionate, who has a vision to grow the business, and is not satisfied by building, you know, a small business there. So I think that's important. You know, there has to be scale so that it's easy for the investor to exit. It is supported by a good management team. I think Dhanpal, uh, you, know, uh, you know, talked about it a little bit. Uh, as you scale and grow, it is not possible for any uh, business or entrepreneur to control it like the way he did in the past. So he needs to let go, hire good management teams, professionalize, make sure that he's not insecure and needs to delegate. And I think that's a very important aspect of how private equity firms look at you know, backing an enterprise or an entrepreneur. Uh, is, is, is the founder willing to let go and get in more people to help him as he grows the business along? Alignment of interest, I think uh, uh, the more said the better. Uh, we all want to back a particular entrepreneur, not a part of his business. We want to make sure that you know, we are in it together as a whole. And, and not in just a you know, small part of the business. You know, so related party transactions, multiplicity of businesses, coming in a subsidiary are all things that private equity funds uh, you know, really don't like. Uh, the, the next one is, the, is, is an equally important one, which is the ability to treat us as a partner. You, know, you might have two or three founders that come together to build a business. What the investor is really looking at is to treat the incoming private equity investor as a partner. It might be a junior partner where you can actually take inputs, take counsel, and, uh, and, and, and use those inputs uh, to, to really see how you can grow the business. And the last one is the fact that we need to exit. Uh, you know, I think Dhanpal uh, talked about it as well. It's an illiquid asset class. Uh, each investor has a time frame for an exit, and we need to make sure that you do everything in, uh, you know, you facilitate an exit, and I think this is important. So if investors get the feeling that, look, you're just not going to give an exit, this is just, you take some money and then we'll figure out four or five years down the line, I think that can be challenging. So you need to plan for that event and feel comfortable that there could be another partner in your shoes four or five years from now, six years from now. I think that's something that, that's important. So these are factors that really, you know, go in, uh, that we look for when we look at a business. And you know some of these softer factors is what we look for in an entrepreneur. I'm just going to uh, you know conclude with a case study of an investment that we have done. Um, you know as to how entrepreneurs really need to uh, you know intervene in businesses, and you know what does it really take for it to be successful. So we uh, you know in my previous row, uh, firm we made an investment in 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 Ahmedabad in uh, in an IT products company. A uh, very profitable business. I can see some some of the management team members here. They'll be able to relate to this. Uh, you know, fast-growing company, very profitable. We put in money in in 2007, and uh, you know, nine months down the line, they recorded their worst ever year. Sales were down, and they lost a lot of money. Almost 50% of the the entire investment went towards. Uh, went to, they invested quite a bit. Why did they lose money? There was intense competition. Uh, they spread themselves too thin. They thought that they're going to take the world by a storm because they have capital uh, at their disposal, and uh, they needed to refocus their business. And that's really where you know the founder really comes in. Uh, and obviously, the investor support, supports all the initiatives, you know, and, and guides them. But the founder really took control of the business and realized that you know there needs there, there is a need to repivot the business, need to change focus, and they did a bunch of things. One, they strengthened the management team aligned the management team's goals with that of the organization, you know, put together a clear rolling three-year business plan. So they made a lot of changes in the business model and strategy, sharpened the product focus, realized that you can't fight with everybody across the world. So pick niches where you can be meaningful, uh, where you can have leadership positions. Uh, the result of all of this is that within two years, the business turned around and they grew 
you know, 10 times in revenues and seven times in EBITDA. So, you know, you can see what really happens when you get meaningful intervention from management uh, and, and strong entrepreneurs who are willing to take inputs and step back and, 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 and so you, you could have a situation where, uh, you know, this, this is a classic example of what really happened in that, in the second half of that, of that pictogram that I showed you where the business plan, you know, was set at a certain level, but the outcomes were still positive, but management and entrepreneur needed to take, inter uh, uh, needed to intervene and make it happen, which is why private equity is all about backing a good, uh, a good management team and, and a strong entrepreneur. So the outcome was very good. It created value for all investors and for the shareholders, and I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, uh, all of you can partner with other investors and, and, and create value for yourselves and also achieve the goals that you want to do.